Well, the United States and Britain say they will send thousands of troops to evacuate their embassy staff in Afghanistan as the Taliban captured another two major cities on Thursday. And Kandahar and Herat, the second and third largest Afghan cities, fell to control of the militants in another major blow to the government forces. It's the Taliban's biggest seizure so far as their forces further threaten Kabul. And for more, we go live to uh, Zamayali Abis uh, Abbasin in Kabul. Uh, first of all, what is the latest situation on the ground? Can, can you give us uh, a picture for what's happening? Hello, Louine. Uh, good morning. Uh, situation is getting worse. Every morning, people wake up and they hear news of collapsing a couple of provincial capitals now. Last night, three uh, capital, provincial capitals collapsed to the Taliban, including two major cities, the second and third, Kandahar and Herat to the Taliban. At the same time, Ferrisco of whole province is also fell to the Taliban. And uh, I, will, I will come up step by step uh, for the provinces. Uh, in Herat province, there was, uh, were heavy clashes between the NDSF local militia forces and the Taliban. Uh, for weeks. Finally, we got the news late night that Herat has collapsed to the Taliban. And uh, according to uh, the reports and information from uh, Herat province, Ismail Khan, a prominent uh, uh, jihadi leader and uh, uh, governor and other provincial officials have gone to the 2000, uh, 207th uh, army corps and they are besieged out there with more than 200 tanks and military vehicles and weaponry and arm and ammunition, which is located very close to the uh, city and now Herat city is totally under control of Taliban. And when we come to uh, Kandahar, Kandahar also collapsed, the city collapsed to the Taliban. Taliban are uh, now rolling around the city, especially the Ainu Mina, the major city where, where billions of dollars are spent and a lot of the elites are living there. According to the locals, they are rolling around and walking and firing and celebrating the victory of Kandahar province is now their capital city uh, of the rise of the Taliban. And, of course, in Ghur province, the uh, capital city, uh, Ferrisco, is also easily fell to the Taliban. Now, surrounding uh, provinces and the boring uh, provinces and cities are also under heavy clashes. More than four of them are uh, really competitive and the clashes continues. Right, and the uh, Taliban is gaining ground in Afghanistan in a fast speed. Why is Taliban's advance so fast and formidable? Of course, it's something militarily uh, can be discussed. According to the military uh, experts, they say that the Taliban had a very strategic plan to first collapse the district levels and then surround the capital levels and cities. And that's what we are seeing today. And the critics say that Afghan government had lag about their military uh, strategies and tactics over the grounds and at, uh, on the other side many people believe that the NDSF is not willing to fight for the gov current government because there are a lot of uh, leadership problems in the government and government uh, as we see is under really tough criticisms uh, nowadays and uh, Many people have already sparked their anger over the government because of the leg that the government have in military leadership. And uh, Taliban advances seems to be very strategic. They were getting ready for a long time and they had a very good rest for uh, almost an year. And when they started, they keep continuing their offensive and that's why uh, many believe they are uh, getting advances in the battlefields. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. says uh, it is sending back thousands of troops to help evacuate embassy personnel and uh, U.S. citizens. Let's take a listen. Uh, this is not abandonment. This is not an evacuation. Uh, this is not the wholesale withdrawal. What this is, 
uh, is a reduction in the size of our civilian footprint. This is a drawdown of civilian uh, Americans uh, who um, will, uh, in many cases, be able to perform their important functions elsewhere, whether that's in the United States or, or elsewhere uh, in the region. So the message shouldn't be, the implications of this shouldn't be outsized. Uh, I think uh, all parties, the Afghan government, the Taliban, uh, our international partners with whom we have been in touch uh, about this, uh, need to uh, uh, understand uh, that we intend to continue uh, our diplomatic presence on the ground. Well, the U.S. officials just said that uh uh, the message sent by this uh, should, should not be uh, uh, f to explained, uh, should be interpreted too much. So, uh, Zamar Ali, to what extent actually does Washington's withdrawal of civilians reflect uh, the severity of the situation in Kabul? Uh, when it comes to the residents in Kabul, they are terrified, they're concerned, and they have no idea what's going on and particularly when the U.S. announces that they are sending 3,000 more troops to Afghanistan to secure their uh, civilian staff at the U.S. Embassy. That's of m much concern for uh, the people in Kabul. And uh, I was talking with a military retired general and he was saying it seems like the U.S. telling the Taliban spare our embassy and the rest of the country he said doesn't matter and it's also of really uh, hard critics that people of Afghanistan are seeing uh, US uh, forces and the US strategies particularly President Biden policies towards Afghanistan worse and these they say that they are leaving Afghanistan alone once again as 1919s, uh, uh, 1990s and that would be a very uh, tough time for Afghan people because it was the United States as an ally, as a supportive country more than any other country. If they uh, take their back to Afghan people then it will be really tough. And the fear because of the Taliban are increasing all around the country, particularly in Kabul and people are uh, hearing a lot of news and rumors about their uh, coming back and retreat. That's why people are in a very deep trauma uh, psychologically and of course uh, all around the country physically they are facing challenges and threats. All right, thank you very much indeed. Um, our reporter Zamarali Abbasin reporting from Kabul. Meanwhile, a humanitarian crisis is unfolding in Kabul as Afghans flee from the Taliban's recent gains. And the United Nations said Thursday relief workers are determining how to provide assistance to over 18 million people seeking safety in the capital and other large cities. And the UN says it's focusing on displaced people from the conflict as well as floods and gender issues. And the fall of Afghanistan's second and third most populated cities means a deluge of displaced people. Here's how some describe the conditions. Look at my children's situation here. They've been sleeping on mats for almost two days. Nobody is helping us with water, food or a place to sleep. Is it not cruelty, the Taliban coming into our homes? I am only a street vendor. I have only one cart. I cannot afford it. A rocket hit at the back of our house, so we were scared and thought that if tonight it hits the back of our house, tomorrow night one could hit our home. We decided to get our children out of there. And the uh, Doha meeting on Afghanistan has uh, just wrapped up with a call for an accelerated peace process. The multinational statement calls for immediate halt of Taliban attacks on provincial capitals, a say in cities saying it is a matter of great urgency. It warns that foreign capitals will not recognize any government in Afghanistan imposed through the use of military force. An envoy is also committed to reconstruction assistance once a viable political peace is reached. And the envoys in Doha are from China, the US, Pakistan, and the United States, and the European Union, and representatives of uh, Afghanistan government and the Taliban. As the US led international forces pull out, uh, the Taliban have seized two-thirds of the country. And U.S. intelligence uh, suggests the militants would take the capital, Kabul, within 
90 days. And Professor Wang Jin is joining us from Xi'an. He's a specialist in the Middle Eastern studies at China's Northwest University. He's going to discuss uh, the situation in Afghanistan with us. Professor Wang, welcome to Global Watch. Well, Al Jazeera is reporting a top Afghan official saying the government wants to create a power-sharing deal with Taliban. Is this really something the Taliban would really agree to? Uh, yes, Stoning, the power sharing government principle is always the principle that held by uh, Afghan government. But the problem is not kind of the principle, but just the details, especially the very important detail that determine the, the structure of the political power sharing implementation. If you look at the, the gap between the Taliban and the Afghan government, the gap is very, very apparent that uh, uh, a Taliban Afghan uh, Taliban want to uh, turn uh, Afghanistan into the very uh, uh, conservative state and also the dominates the government power. Well, I think the Afghan government want to uh, share the, the, the power, political power, uh, uh, hand, uh, in, hand in hand with uh, Afghan Taliban and maybe to some kind of equality between the two blocs. So the, the stance held by the two parts is very, very, uh, uh, it's very, very big. And I don't think it is very uh, likely to be uh, bridged in the very recent future, Donny. Then what options do you think uh, Afghan government has uh, at this point in re reaching a political settlement with the Taliban or share power in the future? I think that for the for the the very priority for the Afghan government right now is I think they uh, they have to do is that uh, they have to realize what kind what what things they want. On the one hand, they have to defend uh, offensives from Afghan Taliban. On the other hand, you have to uh, maintain a kind of a rich a kind of political deal with Afghan uh, uh, Taliban to uh, to help uh, construct the political future for the. Uh, for uh, for the country, if we look at on the one hand the 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 the, the, the battlefield line that uh, Afghan government asked the help from uh, from neighboring countries, for, for example, after the help from United States, after help from uh, India to safeguard the, their uh, their land. On the other hand, they also mobilized and organized local militias to resist the offensive of the Afghan Taliban. Meanwhile, they also asked for the help of international society to facilitate and encourage the dialogues with the Taliban. But the option is very limited given the very uh, sensitive battle, battleground reality. So maybe more efforts should be done, not only by, uh, by the parties inside Afghanistan, but also by the international society. Tony. And the Taliban is facing a dilemma here as well, don't they? Uh, because uh, the EU and US uh, uh, say that foreign capitals will not, to, actually it's a statement uh, from Doha warning that foreign capitals will not recognize any government in Afghanistan uh, imposed through the use of military force. This clearly is referring to Taliban. Is there a, a, an option for political pressure from the international community at this point? Uh, I think, yes, as you say, the attitudes from the European Union and also some of the Western countries are very clear that they, are, they don't agree with uh, the government dominated by uh, central government dominated by Taliban in the future through the military uh, manner that, uh, that they, they will seize the power. They will not agree with it. But here the problem is that I don't think the Taliban government, if they really uh, see the capital in the future, if they have the capability, I don't think they will care about it. Because if you look at the year uh, uh, from the 1996 to 1999, when the Taliban uh, dominated uh, Afghanistan, actually very few states had uh, the, the very uh, diplomatic ties with uh, Taliban dominated government and especially the uh, Taliban dominated government does not care didn't care about the, the, the ties with the Western countries so the pressure from the European Union is very important but I don't think it will determine the future of the Afghanistan uh, because the the uh, right now if we look at the situation there the, what things really determines is the battleground a computation between Afghan government forces and the Taliban forces in the future. Don't you? All right, thank you very much, Professor Wang Jin from China's Northwest University.